Today we are going to learn about the effects of temperature and pressure on the volume of a gas. According to the kinetic particle theory, when a gas is heated, what happens? When a gas is heated, the temperature increases and the particles of the gas gain more kinetic energy, collide with each others with the wall of the container more frequently, and the particles move further apart. So what happens to the volume? The volume increases. So as the temperature of the gas increases, the volume increases as well so there is a direct relationship between the temperature and the volume of the gas gas particles are far apart from each others when we exert pressure on the gas by pushing the piston what happens to the volume of the gas the volume of the gas decreases why the volume decreases because the particles move closer to each others so the volume decreases so when we increase the pressure on the gas the volume of the gas decreases so there is an inverse relationship between the pressure and the volume of the gas subtopic 1.5 diffusion when you go through the door of a restaurant, you often smell the food being cooked. Why do you think this happens? This happens because the gas particles leave the pans and spread through the air in the restaurant. This movement is called diffusion. So the spreading or the movement of the particles from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration is diffusion. According to the kinetic particle theory, the gas particles are in continuous random motion. They collide with each others and with the wall of the container. If we remove the divider here, the gases start to diffuse from an area of higher concentration to an area of lower concentration till we reach uniform distribution. Here we have an experiment to illustrate the diffusion process. We have two gas jars on top of each others. This one is filled with air particles. And the bottom jar has bromine liquid. In between, we have a cover to separate the gas jars. If these two gas jars are left for a day, by the end of the day, we will find brown red fumes spread evenly throughout the gas jars. So brown red fumes spread evenly. Why does this happen? This happens because of diffusion. How does this process take place? Let's discuss the details. First, bromine is a liquid. Bromine is a volatile reddish brown liquid at room temperature. As we said before, volatile liquids have low boiling point, so they evaporate easily. So the bromine liquid evaporate into bromine gas. So now we have bromine gas in the bottom jar and on the top jar, the air particles. Once we remove the cover, the bromine gas particles and the air gas particles, according to the kinetic particle theory, are in continuous random motion. So we have air particles against the bromine particles. They are in continuous random motion. They spread or move in other words, from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration, this is diffusion, then they collide with each others and with the wall of the gas jars as well.
So, to summarize what happens in this experiment, evaporation of bromine takes place first, then diffusion happens, then collision happens between the bromine and the air particles. Diffusion also takes place in liquids. We have here an example of diffusion of a green food color. We have a beaker, green food color in water. This process here takes days till we reach the uniform distribution of the food color throughout the beaker. Why do you think this takes days, not one day like the diffusion in gases? Diffusion in liquids is much slower than the diffusion in gases. Why? The kinetic particle theory is the answer as well here because the particles of the liquid move much more slowly than the gas particles. So why diffusion in liquids is much slower than diffusion in gases? Because the particles of the liquid move much more slowly than the particles of the gases. So, diffusion takes place between gases, diffusion takes place between liquids as well, and diffusion takes place between liquids and gases. What about the solids? Does diffusion take place in solids? No, because solids do not move. The particles of the solid only vibrate in position because they have the regular crystal lattice structure. So diffusion only occurs in liquids, in gases, between liquids and gases. Another example of diffusion is the diffusion of potassium permanganate solution in water. Potassium permanganate is a compound having purple colored crystals. This is the starting point here. We put some crystals of potassium permanganate in a jar full of water. After a few minutes, you will see deep purple color at the bottom of the jar and it's very light on the top. After a few hours, the solution becomes uniformly purple because of diffusion. Factors affecting the rate of diffusion. The first factor is the mass. We mean here by the mass, the relative molecular mass or the relative atomic mass. So less dense particles diffuse faster than more dense particles. Here we have an example of different gases. Let's check which diffuses faster. Hydrogen gas, the symbol of hydrogen gas is H2. How many atoms of hydrogen? Two atoms of hydrogen. What is the relative atomic mass of hydrogen? It's equal to one. So the relative molecular mass, two times one, it's equal to two. On the other hand, carbon dioxide, CO2, we have one carbon and we have two oxygen atoms. What's the relative atomic mass of carbon and oxygen? If we check the periodic table, the relative atomic mass of carbon is 12 and oxygen is 16. So carbon, 12, oxygen, 16. So here, 12. Here we have 32. So total is the relative molecular mass of CO2 is 44. So which diffuses faster? Which one has less mass? the hydrogen gas, of course. Another example, the nitrogen gas, N2, oxygen is O2. What is the relative atomic mass of nitrogen? It is 14. So N is equal to 2 times 14 equal to 28. So this is the relative molecular mass of the nitrogen gas and oxygen it's equal to 16 times 2, it's 
32. So which gas diffuses faster? The nitrogen gas will diffuse faster since it has a smaller relative molecular mass. Back to the factors. So we are done with the mass. Factor number two is the temperature or in other words, the energy. If the particles have more kinetic energy, what do you think will happen to the rate of the diffusion? The rate of the diffusion will increase. Why it will increase? According to the kinetic particle theory, as the temperature increased, the particles gain more energy and they move faster move faster so the rate of the diffusion increases the third factor is the presence of other substances the presence of other substances diffusion is faster in vacuum Diffusion is faster in vacuum. The last factor is the intermolecular spaces. Do you remember when we said the diffusion is gases is faster than the diffusion in liquids? Why? Because gases have larger intermolecular spaces and they move faster. So the intermolecular spaces is a factor that affects diffusion. Here we have an experiment to compare the rates of diffusion of two gases. We have a dry glass tube and we have, this is a cotton wool, cotton wool soaked in concentrated hydrochloric acid. The other cotton wool is soaked in concentrated ammonia solution. And we have two rubber stoppers on each side. After some time, we will find a white ring formed here in this position nearer to the end with the cotton wool soaked in concentrated hydrochloric acid. What happens exactly? Let's discuss the details. First, concentrated hydrochloric acid. Hydrochloric acid is volatile. Volatile means it has low boiling point, low boiling point, so it evaporates easily. So the concentrated hydrochloric acid evaporates, giving me the hydrogen chloride gas. So here we have hydrogen chloride gas, HCl. On the other hand, we have concentrated ammonia solution. We know that the ammonia is a very volatile liquid. So it evaporates as well, giving me ammonia gas. So we have HCl gas plus NH3 gas. Both gases diffuse, collide with each other and react. The reaction here gives me the white ring. This white ring is ammonium chloride solid, NH4Cl. So the first step here that happens is the evaporation process. Evaporation to give me HCl gas and H3 gas. Step number two, the gas particles store to move, spread, in other words, diffusion takes place. Then HCl and NH3 collide, so collision happens. The last process is the reaction to give me the white ring of ammonium chloride. Regarding this experiment, we have a few important points to highlight. The first point, why do you think the tube 
is horizontal and not vertical. The tube is horizontal, not vertical, to minimize the effect of the gravitational force. Point number two. Why do we have rubber stopper at each end? Why do we have a rubber stopper? To prevent what? To prevent the escape of the gas particles. Number three. Is the white ring formed immediately? Is the white ring formed immediately? No, it's not formed immediately. Why? Because the particles of the ammonia and the hydrogen chloride need time to spread and to diffuse from the ends of the tube to the other parts of the tube. Also, the tube is filled with air, no vacuum. And the particles are not just moving in one direction. They are moving randomly in all directions, colliding with each other with the wall of the glass tube. So this takes time till they collide and react with each other. Point number four. Why do you think the white ring is formed exactly in this position. Why it is closer to the end with the hydrogen chloride gas away from the ammonia gas? This means what? Which gas travels faster? The ammonia gas moves faster. Why does the ammonia gas moves faster? The ammonia gas moves faster because it's lighter. It has smaller relative molecular mass than the HCl particles. If we check the HCl particles, what's the relative molecular mass? The hydrogen is equal to 1 and the chlorine is equal to 35. So the relative molecular mass is 36. On the other hand, the ammonia, the nitrogen is equal to 14. Hydrogen is equal to 1 times 3. We have 3 hydrogen. So the relative molecular mass of the ammonia is 17. So here, relative molecular mass of HCl is 36. Relative molecular mass of NH3 is 17. So the ammonia gas is lighter. In other words, it has smaller relative molecular mass than the HCl particles, so moves faster and diffused more quickly. That's why the white ring is formed closer to the side of the cotton wool soaked with the concentrated hydrochloric acid.